I flushed this out the tank a couple times with this regular uh, spring water and um, not much came out. It's pretty dang clean. So on this round, we're going to do hot water and I think it'll only need one more night and I'll have this thing pretty much clean. Okay, I'll go get some hot water. I'll be right back. Okay, we got the hot water. Got this thing all mixed up. Got that topped off all the way. We got our bolt. So there's not much rust in there, so this one hole should be fine. I should have drilled more so you, you don't make a hydrogen bob, like I said. So. This bolt was brand new when I put it in there, and look at that. It's halfway gone. This is an older cycled battery um, I got from a friend that was about five, six years old. And I refurbished it with a welder using the 50 amp pulses and I just topped it back off with water, um, distilled water. And it brought like three or 400 cranking amps. So this battery is really old, but it has um, a little over a thousand cranking amps. So I got it for free. Can't complain. Um, I believe the idea of using the battery is so it takes most of the pressure off of the charger. This thing just has to trickle charge the battery and then the battery's taking all the abuse. If you hook your charger straight up to this, um, it might be hard on it. So, I'm going to dump this nasty water. <laughs> Just so everybody can see, pretty nasty stuff. Okay, friends, the direction says to let it soak overnight for really dirty parts and to rinse off with water once you pull them out. Berry Chem Dip Carburetor Parts Cleaner is a highly effective carburetor parts and throttle body cleaner that removes gum, varnish, fuel, residue, and other deposits from carburetor parts and throttle bodies in 15 to 30 minutes without heat, aeration, or agitation. Safe for use with most plastic and metal carburetor parts and draw bodies, including steel aluminum and their alloys. Limit soak times of coated and sensible finishes to a maximum of four hours. Directions to simple carburetor of throttle body as necessary and place in to included dip basket. Submerge basket and Kim dip and water soak for 15 to 30 minutes. Remove parts and rinse with water. To clean, considerable buildup allow longer soak time. To remove extremely heavy carbon, allow to soak overnight. Rinse with water and clean with a wire brush if necessary. Do not soak coated or sensitive aluminum parts over four hours. Cast iron and low alloy steel should be coated with penetrating oil, but it's very very easy to dose it. Part number 1612, after rinsing to prevent flash rusting for best results and longer, cleaner life. Remove loose dirt and excess grease before soaking parts. Kim dip. Okay, so hopefully I didn't overdo it because it's been in here for over 12 hours. Alright, bang in this basket. Okay, I'm gonna go blast all these off with water and brick cleaner. Okay, friends, we got these things scrubbed off with the plastic brush and water, and then I rinsed them off with some carb choke cleaner just to get all that water out of there. And now I'm gonna let them air dry in the sun. And it didn't quite take off all of the paint, so I'm gonna do one more overnight soak I was kind of worried that uh, might take too much material off because it says on the instructions um, for aluminum alloy and I think this might be like a zinc or something so I was kind of like worried of leaving it in there overnight but it doesn't look like it's that aggressive it's probably like the diluted California version with my luck but uh, yeah we'll let it sit one more night and that should get all this paint off of here as you can see it's still got some paint so it's not that corrosive if it was highly corrosive all of this paint would have been peeled off in 12 hours so I got all these jets I was able to squirt out every single hole on every jet and had everything had decent flow and I do have a rebuild kit coming on the way but just in case it's such an old machine sometimes when you get these rebuild kits for these older machines they're missing parts so just in case I cleaned the old jets and checked them and I was kind of wondering like what was wrong with this thing the only thing I found that was suspect was the float is super old and it did have some crud in the bottom so 
one of these uh, the hole that goes in the bottom of the float comes out here seemed like it had kind of slow flow it seemed like I kind of cleaned it out a little bit when I squirted it but everything else was actually you know pretty pretty good I think someone else was in here before me and it must have been rebuilt probably in the last 20 or 30 years because all the bolts everything came off real easy I still have to get this jet off but it works fine so once I do one more soak I might try to get that jet off um, it's not even a jet it's just where the the float valve seats and uh, it seals great still but I'd like to get a brand new one on there just because it's so labor intense to tear this thing off just real hard to get to the bolts so yeah I think one more overnight soak and this thing will be pretty clean I think I'm gonna convert this to rubber hose um, yeah that way it's easier to take the carburetor on or off so okay well, I'll give you an update here in a few okay friends another night of letting this sit overnight a little longer Let's see how much rust we're going to get out of it. I'm going to very carefully disconnect this from my bubbly battery. Oh, yeah. Yuck. Wow. We flushed out. Some more junk. I'm gonna go rinse this tank out and show you what the inside looks like, and then we're gonna let it sit for a third night. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but it's looking pretty clean. I triple rinsed it. I'm still seeing hints of rust. So, thank goodness my carburetor parts are over a week to get here, because I'm gonna have a week to get this tank nice and clean, but it's already looking way better. It's just it's kind of a long process is my only complaint, but I think it's a lot better than spending 40 bucks a gallon on chemicals. And then I have to dispose of the chemicals or store them once I'm done. Okay, I'm going to fill this up with baking soda and hot water again. I'll let you know how it's looking on the next. Hey friends. Sorry for the noise, uh, it's raining and this roof isn't insulated, so it's kind of noisy. I might just have to do voiceover, but yeah, I guess I'll have to see how it plays out. So, I'm just showing you what I got. I went to the parts store and I'm going to bypass this contraption metal i'd like to keep it original but this thing is just a really the pain in the butt to take off and it's in a tight spot so i don't want to cross thread it any more than i already did and someone completely stripped this off so i figure i'm just going to convert it to a gas line um or just a regular fuel line and then i'm going to put two inline fuel filters and they're just to be on the safe side hopefully it doesn't back off my flow so much to where the engine will run if it will then i'll have to address that but uh, i'm going to keep two of these things on there just in case because this contraption here this is what the caterpillar uses for the filter i was just watching just chunks blow through this thing this thing does absolutely nothing. I don't know. I think it's just for like pie needles or like really big organic pieces that might block, but it's not going to block, you know, all those little tiny pieces of rust. So, yeah, and earlier I showed you guys the float. I had to order a new one, but this thing's about to, to break. And it's so loose, this has got to be off spec for sure. So I got a new float on the way and I got a carburetor rebuild kit on the way, but uh, unfortunately it's going to take like over a week to get here and we have a bunch of bad weather coming again. So hopefully I can get to that dozer and get it fired up here shortly. So today's video, um, 
I'm just showing you, obviously, the fuel line, inline fuel line I'm going to be adding and converting that. But I also got some grade 8 nuts for the car grader. You know, that way they're not going to strip off. So hopefully I'm making the right choice here. But they're so hard to get to, I really wanted some really good nuts to put back on that carburetor. So we got grade 8 nuts, so we shouldn't have any more problems there. And this thing's kind of stripped out a little bit. But I found these, and I'm hoping that hole's big enough. It's not going to restrict the flow. But I think it'll work because the hole in the float valve portion is pretty tiny so i'm pretty confident this will work so let me snug these on real quick and then we are going to make some gaskets let's see if this thing is gonna seal up so this thing's pretty self-explanatory just a little valve I don't know if you can take this one apart. Some of them you can take them apart and put a new seal in there. But this one's still working, so. I cleaned out the threads a little bit in there. So it should be pretty good on that end. This is where that bowl goes and the seal, which I'm probably just gonna replace it with the O-ring of some sort. This is just a half inch. This one's a half inch. I'm going to see if this is holding. There. I don't think there's any way for me to test it without the bowl on there. Yeah, I'm going to have to put the bowl on there to test it, but I'm pretty sure that'll work. So we got that pet cock all back together. I'm also going to check the carburetor. They've been soaking for quite a while now. It's been over 24 hours. So let's get this carburetor checked. This is all Napa has for hose plants made in China. I was really hoping to source some American made ones, but I guess I'll have to order them online, but these are going to work for now. I just hate running Chinese fuel clamps or hose clamps on my fuel systems. Uh, especially up here in Northern California when we have the bad fire fire season kicking in. Uh, you don't want a fuel line to blow off because you got some cheap Chinese hose clamp on there. They just don't last. So I'm going to pop this off real quick just to check the carburetor. Um, I was kind of worried that this stuff was too corrosive, this chem dip. But it's been taking a couple days just to peel the paint off, so... I wasn't too alarmed when I seen that, so i just been letting them sit for a while. Yeah, I'm liking how that's turning out. Yeah, I keep, I'm going to keep letting it soak for another day or two. That's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. Kind of a little mess here. I got all my tools sitting here so I can do that carburetor rebuild once I get it. Intake here. Wow, looks pretty nasty. Gaskets coming off as well. So this is actually, I believe it bolts up against the firewall like this. So I actually need to make two of these gaskets. And no gasket there. Yeah, these gaskets are in pretty rough shape. So let's get these surfaces cleaned up.
Okay, well, I say we start with the easy ones first. So two of those. Put a little bigger square just so I have some extra space to work with. We got the holes lined up. There we go, we got one gasket. All right, I'm gonna make another one. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna make one more of these. I think you get the idea. I'll see you when we start on this one. Okay, friends, we are back. I got two of those gaskets made. Pretty happy with that. Now, there's this gasket you gotta make. So, I'm trying to think the best way to make this one. Probably just the same way. Smart. All the holes lined up. Actually, I need to make two of these. So there's the first one. That actually came out pretty well. So I got to make another one of these to go on the other side of the firewall. So I'll see you here in a few. So I'm actually going to try to trace this one just to, for something different on the video instead of using the mold and the hammer trick. Uh, but as you can see, it works pretty good. So I'm going to just trace this and then try to cut it out. So you want to leave enough space on these corners when you're punching these holes because they'll split right here. So you wanna always leave an ex some extra material. Otherwise you're gonna split your end and then you'll have to start all over. So what I'm gonna do actually is get the holes marked. See that? Should work. And I'm gonna punch the holes first. And I'm just leaving some extra material. That's kind of close. Just so my ends don't split. I think I'm just going to use this actually. This is going to be easier, so I might as well just do that. You can trace it with the, the blade as well, just I feel like this is going to be easier and quicker.
That's how it's supposed to go right there. Yep, that'll work. Both of these. We got the intake piece that goes on the carburetor to the firewall completed for gaskets. We got one for each side, and then this one has two on each side of the firewall. So let's get to the next one. So the next one, I was able to salvage this gasket. Bring it up a little bit. So we already made that gasket. That's the one that goes on top here. So time for the tricky one. So I'm actually, I'm going to do this with the tracer. Just to make the video more interesting. Um, if you can save the old gaskets, though, you can just trace them. It's, it makes life a lot easier just to trace that gasket. If you have an object in the way that so you can do your mold. So, what I'm going to do is... Yeah, it's raining just a little bit, if you noticed. We are going to use this tool. You can get these at the dollar store. Uh, they work pretty good for doing this kind of stuff. You just need, or you can use anything you have to make the circle. Um, that looks like a soda can might work. You know, anything you can find uh, laying around. This thing doesn't break, come out of the box. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, we could act like this was part of the engine and you couldn't rip it off like this. Let's say it was on the engine you want to make the gas do, right? So this is two and a half, two and a half inches across. So let's do half of two and a half which would be one and a quarter. It actually has a measurement on it, but it's in metric. <laughs> Cause it's in... All right, there we go. Chinese. Let's see if I can find one and a quarter. It's right there. It's really small, but you can see it right there. It says one and a quarter. I believe we just got this from the dollar store, so. You got to be real careful because this thing, it doesn't even tighten or anything. So we got half of our measurement because we're making a circle, so we only need half of it to get the right circle. I want to stab the middle. This thing is super china, so I gotta be real careful here. Okay, we got our circle. So now we're gonna use the vector blade to follow this circle. Always check to see if it'll fit. It looks like it's too tight. So I'm gonna cut a little more. I'm actually gonna cut this out so it's a little easier to pin here, making sure I have enough space to make my hole still so the material will crack. What I'm gonna do is this with the pin just so I have an idea how much material to make up. Just like an eighth inch or so. And I'm more like a sixteenth. We're going to take a little more off, just a sliver. You can use like a big socket, anything you have laying around the shop or will work. But just in case you don't have anything laying around, just show you how I do it. Okay, now we got it going around here. It's a little... A little on the tight side, but that should work. Okay, so we got it around. 
Now this thing has a broken nipple right here where there's a bolt supposed to go through. So I'm actually going to outline this one. So we'll get this one bolt hole in and I'm going to outline that one just so I know where to put the bolt. Okay, and then we're going to come back around. This is a pretty tight fit, so I don't really have to hold it too much. So there's supposed to be a nipple coming off of this. So I'm just going to eyeball it. Just like that. Traced it with the pin. Now let's carefully get this back off there. Not messing it up. Kind of just gonna guess where the hole that. That would be the surface right there. So. This side. Okay, we got our holes. Now it's pretty simple, just uh, cut it out with the scissors. I'm gonna cut out all the black for my outline. Gotta eyeball this one, it's a little off. Okay, I might leave some of this stuff for later for making smaller gaskets. Okay, hey, what do you think? It's gonna work. Ooh, we still had to cut that out. I totally forgot about that. Ooh, that's gonna be sketchy. Let's see if I can do that while it's on here. <laughs> okay, looks pretty good. Now, let's see if I can make this work because I was supposed to leave material on there. Let's tap it really slowly. Pop that out of there without messing us up. Okay, so this one's kind of funky. It's kind of skinny. Just gotta be real, real careful. Why? Well, I'm just gonna cut that part out with the blade. Okay, looks like we got it. Let's double check it one more time. See if we got this. This was a tricky gasket. Not gonna lie. Real careful, this is where you can turn the gasket real easy. Okay, that should work. We got the little breather hole open still, and we have a hole for that. I'm actually gonna cut this a little closer. I believe the bolt's a little closer. Okay, that should work. I think I'm just going to cut that off though because the bolt's going to mess it up possibly. Yeah, I'm going to cut that off because that bolt, the way I have to hit it with the washer, it might, might affect this. So I don't even really need this. I was just kind of doing it for the video because it's snapped off right here. So I just need a seal right there. But yeah, just for the video's sake, we did that. So... I'm just going to snip that off because I'm not going to need it and I don't want that bolt to like smash this gasket. So we'll just carefully round that off like that. That should work. Okay, we got all the gaskets made for the intake system. We have to make two of those, two of these. I'm pretty happy with how everything came out. Let's get into the next step. Okay, friends, this is what I'm dealing with. We got some march snow it looks like hopefully this isn't making a dangerous explosive bomb from the hydrogen gas might have to let this tarp vent very carefully
hammer. So this thing's been sitting for three days because I haven't been able to get to it. So hopefully I can get to it today. Rinse it out. We got a little break in the weather here. It's supposed to be snowing all day, but we don't have any snow right now. So I'm gonna be extremely careful. Removing this tarp. See why I taped that? Because if that touches, it can blow us up. Okay, I can work with this. So we better unhook this as soon as possible. That unhooked. Let's see if this charger is still charger still working. Man, these old American-made chargers, these 10 amps, man, they last forever. This thing's ancient. What's up, bud? Blue wants to say hi. What's up, Blue? Come here. Come here. Right there. I know. What's up, the snow? What's up? What's with the snow? What's with the snow? Okay. I gotta get this before it's gonna get rained on here. So, man, oh, that whole bolt's gone. Wow. I think I'm going to have to put a new bolt in there. The bolt is gone all the way. <laughs> wow. Sounds like the storm's trying to blow something in here. Okay, let's see. Pretty rusty. So, it looks pretty good. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up. Looks like we got a little bit of flash rust, but I think I'm going to call that quits with this weather I'm having. I had the cap sitting in WD-40 for like a week. I gotta get this out of here before it starts raining. 